knitters. How are you today? I thought I would pop in. I've been trying to do a podcast about once a month and I noticed that it had been a month. So here I am. It had been a busy month. <laughs> so I'm back and I just wanted to say hello and make sure everybody's summer's off to a great start. And I'm sure everyone's super busy, just like we are around here. So this morning I finished my, I'm gonna jump right in. <laughs> I have a lot, I have so much stuff spread around the table here to share, share with you. So I think I should get going right away. Um, this morning I finished this first sock. It's the Query Fibers and it is, uh, I think it's just a, like a regular um, nylon superwash merino base. It's a shop on Etsy and it is just beautiful. It's 10 stripes. Each stripe is about a quarter inch and I got three rounds for each stripe on here. Um, a couple things I wanted to point out, or one, one thing that happened to me this morning was I was knitting along, I was finishing up the foot, and I noticed that, you know, I was maybe up here, and then I noticed way back down here somewhere, I mean, many, many stripes down, that I had a, an, not a drop stitch, but an elongated stitch, which I had slipped Somehow I had slipped the stitch without knitting it, you know, pulling the new loop through. So when I looked at the back, I could see there was a strand running across the, uh, on the inside of the, the fabric. So I very carefully tried to line up which stitch, you know, going down. I was going to drop down and catch that and then knit it back, you know, one by one back up. And uh, when I, I dropped all the way down, sorry, there's very large garbage truck that just pulled up outside my house pretty loud but when I dropped all the way down I and I started I dropped all the way down I noticed that I was one stitch over than the one that I should have done so I made a ton of work for myself so I, I laddered that one back up I moved just one stitch over and then I dropped that one all the way down and caught that thread and um, made, you know, pull it through the stitch and then pulled it right back up. So all was good, but um, I did do something a little different on this sock, not really, I, but just something I'd heard a few people talking about. This is why podcasts are a good thing because no matter how long you've been knitting, it's always great to hear what other people are doing and different little tricks and tips they have. That's uh, part of the thing I love so much about watching all these great um, people who podcast. Uh, so what I did was when I just used my How I Make My Socks, that regular uh, formula, stockinette stitch sock. I love to do so much. It's so mindless. But I So I start from the top and I knit down. And when I started the heel flap, now these are the um, socks that I made these um, fun uh, I wound, hand wound these fun sock, um, self-striping sock yarn balls. Um, I'm calling them Everlasting Gobstopper balls because I think they look like candy. And uh, I had, I wound this one, I don't know why I did this, but I wound it in two 50 gram balls instead of winding it all in one 100 gram ball. So I had this other ball sitting there. So when I got to the heel flap, I, I pulled from you know, the second ball, if you had it wound in one cake, you could pull from the other end. Like if you're pulling from the inside, you could do the sock uh, heel from the outside of the ball. You could attach the um, yarn. Um, just so I didn't break up the stripes quite so much on the front. And it really, it really worked well. So I normally don't do, you know, worry about that kind of thing too much, but I thought I might as well just try it um, for something new to do. So I got here and I, pulled from the second ball. Uh, I left the first, um, the original yarn attached. I pulled from the second ball and I knit the heel flap and the heel turn. And then I think I just knit up, uh, I picked up, 
What did I do? Oh, I think I just had to pick up one um, side of the heel flap, and then I got back to the original yarn. And then, then I switched back to the original yarn again to start, uh, you know, pick up where I left off on the striping. And it really worked quite well. So if you're a person who's concerned about the patterning and striping of your socks, that might be a really good option for you. And I don't know if you saw, that. anyway, wonderful query fibers patchwork colorway. I see she has pre-orders up right now uh, for 600 yard uh, skeins of this um, yarn. So you could really get um, two two pairs of socks out of that, really, if you just did a little bit of a shorter cuff, maybe. I don't know, depending on how long the foot is for your sock, but I certainly could probably get um, two uh, two full, you know, size socks out of that. But anyway, I had this much left. This this is the 50 gram um, ball, and then this is how much I had left. So I have, I have a significant amount left, and I can't remember exactly how much yarn um, was included in the original skein here. And of course, I have my lovely signature double queen needles there, waiting to start the second sock. These are good um, swim team socks, swim meet socks. <laughs> For sure, I think I'm shaking the table a little bit there, sorry. So anyway, those are fun. You'll see more of those um, in days to come. So other things I've been working on, um, my lovely uh, Lefty Shawl by Martina Bain. I have it here. I am on... I think I've done 17 of the leaves and I haven't worked on it much this week because I've been doing other things, work related things. So there it is. It's um, beautiful. It's coming along. I'm using Miss Babs. Uh, it's a kit for the lefty and it's the slate and reds kit if you're interested in this color. It's really beautiful and um, I love the way she combined the purples and the berry uh, berry colors um, almost kind of like this one's almost like a coral type color so it's, it's an interesting mix and I love gray everything goes with gray so that's been fun I've been working away on that that's a good summer project too uh, I've been doing tons of work knitting and uh, one thing I'm working on is this um, these great little uh, Mary Millie and Morgan. I don't remember the names, <laughs> the, the order of the names. I remember the names, but this adorable little doll uh, set I did for Quince. Um, I'm actually, this class has so much technique added in here that I'm actually going to be teaching some workshops on doll making, these kind of traditional little folk dolls. So um, she's adorable and very fun to knit, completely knit in one piece, not a single seam in the whole lot of it. And the hair is actually very simple too. It's it's probably the simplest uh, hair for kind of a doll that I've, I've ever done and it looks really cute and I love her long braids. So I've been making this and I'm doing some additional doll things um, that will be coming up for Quince and Co. Um, related to this, but more is coming, so more and different things are coming. So I'm working hard on that. I have a deadline coming up. And I'm trying to think if there's anything more. But anyway, I wanted to knit up a sample. They have the three original dolls at the Quince offices. So I, I wanted to knit up another one because if I'm making more things for the doll, I need to have one in my hand so I can see how that's coming along. So that's, that's going well. Um, I'm enjoying that as always. Uh, the other day I um, posted some photo. Oh no, it's on my blog. That's right. Oh, that, that giveaway is still going on actually. But I posted a photo of this uh, yarn called Art Smock. It's an air and weight yarn and it's by Duck Duck Wool. And I think that name is so charming and cute. And here's the yarn all wound up in a ball. It's this kind of speckly, um, fun, yarn with all kinds of sweet colors in it and I've already finished uh, an adorable baby hat out of it and 
uh, I am going to be writing up that pattern and publishing it very soon. It's, um, I had made this hat, the same hat um, design a long time ago for uh, TC's band director had a baby and I knit up a hat. It's, it's girly, it's a girly hat. And uh, oh, she just loved that hat for her baby and it turned out very sweet. Now that was a bulky weight yarn. And so, and this is an Erin Wheat yarn, so I'll have that hat pattern available in two different yarn weights. You can literally knit up this hat in a matter of a couple of hours. It has a really fun, a couple of fun little details on it. So um, as soon as I get a chance for my work, I have a lot of deadline knitting going on right now, but as soon as I get a chance, I'll post that, um, make that available for you. So that's been fun, and that yarn is beautiful, and I'll be drawing the winner um, for that um, skein of the sock yarn that I have going right now from Duck Duck Wool, too. So I'll get that going for you. Um, other things that I'm working on, I guess maybe that that's about it for right now. I have like, some socks, I have a shawl, but things I, I'm planning on working on. I have a lot of those, <laughs> as we all do, right? We all have a lot of those. But I have a, I have kind of a funny thing going on this summer. Um, it's just a thing. It's not an organized thing. It's something that's going on just kind of right up here in my own head. But uh, I, have, I have a bunch of um, Paula Emmons Feasley um, shawl patterns and designs that I've wanted to knit for a long time and I have not gotten to them. I have knit, uh, I believe I've knit three of her shawls and then there are three more, is it three or two, but I can't remember, but the one I'm wearing is the Magic Cake Ruffle Shawl um, by Paula and it's so beautiful. I love it and I wear it, I wear it all the time. I love these long ends and I love the triangle shape and I love the ruffle. She hit hit all my favorite things on, on the head with that one. But I have always wanted to make the, um, I have them all sitting right here. And these are my printer, um, which is running out of ink. <laughs> but I want to make this one. This is Gill's Rock. And I've wanted to do that for a long time. And I have this beautiful, I even purchased the yarn for it and I haven't made it yet, but I love this color Wine Sap by uh, Quince & Co. This is the Quince & Co. Chickadee. And I have two skeins and um, it is the most beautiful red. It's so uh, just charming and kind of warm and cozy. And this chickadee is so springy and um, wonderful. 100% wool, no one does it better than Quince. And uh, so that's one shawl that I wanna make. I've got that, I've got them all lined up in a bag here. I even have a checklist that um, I printed out a really long time ago. <laughs> For the, I mean, I have it, literally have had it sitting right there. All right, the other thing I have, these are random patterns sitting there. Okay, the next one, well, that's not the first one I'm gonna cast on. The first one I'm gonna cast on is the Hyla Brook, which came out in 2012, it looks like, and here's the photo for that. I love that dress, too, um, that the model is wearing. It's so cute, but this is another just sweet um, garter stitch, very simple lace pattern uh, with a very light ruffle on it. Um, oh, I love that. So I have that too. And, uh, you know, I believe what happened on this and why I stopped, um, I, I think I even cast this one on at one point and I pulled it out because I got the color. Now is this one that calls for turn? It is. I got the colorway, um, I think it's called fern, but it's kind of an olive green. And I talked about this before. That's, I don't know why I bought that color to make this. I mean, I love that color. It's beautiful, but it really doesn't look good on me. I'm, I'm kind of olive colored skin and 
something, you know, it just doesn't make me look great. And so I pulled it out and now I think what I'm going to use instead, it's not the turn, so it will have a little bit of a different drape, which is completely fine with me. But I'm going to use this Finch um, in this dark gray storm colorway. I have two skeins of that ready to go. And uh, I got this was in my bag at the Knitting Pipeline retreat. So it's all kind of all Knitting Pipeline. <laughs> it's all about Paula. So I have that one ready to go. That's the first one I'm going to cast on a Paula's. And I think that will go very, very quickly. Um, fingering weight, and she recommends a US 5 needle. And it looks really simple and fun. So I want to do that. And the other, the last one I've had forever in my bag is the Allison Bay. And I think Paula has a new shawl pattern coming out really soon here, so I want to get caught up so I can stick with her. Oh, I have this on. I don't know. Something got wet on here. But you can see it has like water marks on it. This shawl is a little different shape. Um, I'm anxious to try it. It has a little mock cable. It's garter stitch and then it has a mock cable uh, detail edging at the end, which I think is quite lovely and simple. Oh, I think I would wear that thing all the time. Wear it out. And I have the bird's egg colorway in the chickadee. And this one I have three skeins. And I don't know if it takes three skeins. It does take three skeins. Oh, that's why I got it. See, I got it specifically for, you know, I purchased it with this shawl of mine. So I'm going to do the bird's egg chickadee. It's so springy and round. Oh, and I have uh, lint stuck right in my yarn. You can tell I've had that for a long time. All clean now. And it's the bird's egg. 106. That's such a great color. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of blue bird's eggs on the ground <laughs> over the last month. I always feel so sad when those robins... Um, lose their eggs. I just wonder how that happens, but it kind of makes you sad. Okay, so those are to come, starting with the, um, what's that first one called? Hyla Brook. That's the first one I'm going to do. And I have all of these sitting right here in this great um, love sock wall. Um, it has like little fun pigs on it. She's out of St. Paul, I think, and it has this fun handle. And it's adorable. And the inside is so cute, too. It's these cute polka dots. But this is a big bag. It can hold all of these things. So I love it. So that's fun. Those are things I'm, I'm planning on doing. And then um, get a quick drink there. Another thing I wanted to share with you uh, that I'm actually going to give away is this wonderful little, you know, I don't even know what you call this. It's from Inf Infinite Twist. Um, and it's like a sampler that she sent out of um, her wonderful yarns. It's infinitetwist.com. I did a shawl design for her called the Prairie Ridge Shawl. Uh, and it ha she's, she's living in China. And there's some kind of Chinese writing on there. Is this, does this have to do with rice? I feel like, <laughs> like it does, but I don't want to say. Is it something with that? Anyway, I don't know. But anyhow, um, it's adorable the way she sent this. And it came in this plastic bag. And I just took it out to um, show you. But let me show you some of these adorable yarns from Infinite Twist, that, which you can get. So she sells hand spun yarn. This is a wool rayon, and this is 20 yards. This little cute, adorable, look at that, looks like a piece of candy or a cookie or something. Um, I'll do the hand spun first. This is 25 yards of the Halo Heather in an autumnal colorway. It's just beautiful. Oh, and it, it's true hand spun. I mean, she has women's 
cooperative. It's all like fair equity work, and she's got some really great things going on. It's Kate Carter, who is the owner of that. Um, this is another hand spun. It's in the persimmon colorway. These are all, I don't know if these are, yeah, they're all a little bit different, but this one's 34 yards. So right there, you're getting close to 100 yards. Such a pretty colorway. Oh, I love that deep reds. Um, this one is another hand spun. This is 40 yards. Gorgeous, called Plum Blossom. And Kate Carter does the dyeing. She's so talented. This is um, pollen colorway, three ply. Now she has some commercially um, made yarns too that she's offering on her site, which is really fun. And I'm doing a shawl, a new shawl design with Kate coming up in the future. And I'm using some of her, not the hand spun, but the um, commercial yarns um, that she's selling. And this is 75 yards. How much was this? This is 40 yards. This is 75 yards. This is called Tiger Lily. The reason I'm showing all these to you is because I'm going to send this to one of you. This is called Blaze. This is another one of her commercial yarns. But they are just beautiful. And um, I'm going to put this right back in the bag and I'm going to send someone this beautiful treat. I figure you may have around 300 yards. You could do, oh my gosh, there's so many things you could do with these. Um, there are different weights. Um, these are more like a, the hand spun. This is maybe more of a, like a bulky, maybe a worsted, um, maybe a worsted DK for these two. And um, these seem more like fingering weight. This may be like a sport weight that you can just play around with it. You could do all kinds of things. You can make little toys. You could um, add squares on a blanket. Um, you can make little ornaments, like little sock or sweater ornaments. You could tie packages. I mean, there's so many things you could do with that. You could combine some of them and do like a fun stripey, you know, mitts or something. Anyway, you guys know all, all that stuff, what you can do with that. Um, so when I post this, I will have you leave a comment and I'll pick someone and I'll send this right out to you, this adorable little thing. If anyone knows what this is, let me know so I don't sit there and wonder <laughs> what it is. It's a cute, very cute way to, uh, to package something up like that. What a nice treat uh, for Kate and from Kate. And uh, thank you, Kate. You are wonderful. The other thing I have today is a quick um, book review. And um, I've been seeing this book a lot on various blogs and it's just doing really well. And it's, it's written by one of my favorite uh, designers, authors. It's Wendy Bernard's Up, Down, All Around. It's a Stuart Taborian Chang, Melanie Thalek book, uh, which are wonderful as always. But she did a stitch dictionary, and right from the top here, I'm going to just read this to you. It says more than 150 stitch patterns to knit top, down, bottom, up, back and forth, and in the round. And if you're like me, and you've designed things, and you've used stitch dictionaries, uh, you always have to convert them and kind of rewrite them if you want it to go a different direction or in the round. You have to rework them. So Wendy's just done all that work for you. You can plug these stitch patterns in all kinds of things like socks and mittens and hats. And you have uh, 150 patterns right here at your fingertips. And um, she provides a lot of guidance for that. It's a beautiful, heavy, hefty book. Uh, you can open it up. And Wendy really is one of the best um, instruction writing uh, designers I've ever seen. Her instructions are so clearly and thoughtfully written. I've knit a lot of her items. I've used her patterns. I've read her books. Um, I've used her formulas. I've uh, done just a lot with her work, and so I'm very familiar with her. Um, and have been for years, and she still is writing her fantastic blog, knitandtonic.net. Um, but so anyway, it's spiral bound, which is great for laying flat, which is always a nice thing. So you can see it has 
it's a little bit of a different binding, so this opens up and it lays flat. Um, beautiful, beautifully written. Uh, the photography's by Fair Allison Gowdy. Uh, let me read this a little bit of this to you. Wow, think about the book. So it says, um, this is a groundbreaking reference book for today's knitters that provides stitch patterns worked in all possible directions. So what she does is she has things knit um, bottom up flat, but she also has top down flat and top down in the round. Um, there are instructions written out and in charts both ways. Um, the stitch patterns are perfect for using in top down and bottom up sweaters, all sorts of things like socks and hats and mittens. Um, she provides a chapter, in, I'm sorry, a, a garment at the end of each chapter where you could plug in different stitch patterns from that chapter. Um, the chapters are divided into um, different categories of stitches. There's a chapter on knits and pearls, one on ribs, slit stitches, textured and fancy stitches, yarn overs and, and eyelets, cables, lace, color work, and hems and edging. So it's very clearly organized. Um, she also gives you three pattern recipes for a hat, scarf, and mittens, and you can use any yarn and gauge you like. Now, Wendy's very talented at that kind of writing. She makes it very easy um, for you to understand how to plug in different um, weights of yarns and patterns. So this book is an absolute huge winner. I love it. Uh, I am going to also do a giveaway for this. I'm trying to think of how I'm going to do this, but I'll put it in the blog post that goes along with this podcast. And uh, this is this is episode eight of my podcast, and um, I'll do a blog post, and I'll give you um, instructions for how you can um, win a copy of the book, and then also I'm going to send out two, and I'll have two winners. So the other winner will get all these wonderful yarns from Infinite Twist, and then another winner, copy of the book. You'll love it. So that's about it today, and uh, I'll be back soon, maybe before next month. <laughs> and I hope you're well. I hope your knitting's going well, and uh, that's about it. Bye, knitters.